tip of the tongue between the lips. That sounds gross. I don't like how you say lips. <laughs> tip of the tongue between the lips. Say it with a lisp. Tip of the yeah, tongue <laughs> between the lips. It's just lip. the lips. Lips. <laughs> between the lips. Welcome to Folly Ado, um, the podcast where we rate and we rant all things spooky. But really, it's it's just it's about just movies. movies. It's just yeah, movies. It's just movies. So for this week, we randomly spun our vast array of scary and spooky movies to which it landed on Poltergeist. So we're watching Poltergeist, or we have watched Poltergeist. By this time, we have watched Poltergeist. We have watched Poltergeist. And have you seen Poltergeist prior to us watching? Yeah, actually. Um, I think I've just seen it in bits and pieces. I mean, I'm sure I've probably fallen asleep to it maybe three or four times. So this was my kind of first time watching it in its entirety. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I remember. Um, By the way, I'm your host, Rob. <laughs> And this is my co-host, Jessica. Oh, I'm not the host. I'm a co-host. You're a host, too. You're a co-host, too. We're both hosts. You're the man, I no, guess. No. Whatever. <laughs> we're both hosts. Anyways, back to Poltergeist. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've seen Poltergeist, but I barely remembered it growing up. I feel like I've watched more of the, like, the, like, scary movie where they do, like, a farce on it, where they make fun of it. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I've seen I've, that I know all of the I references right. from it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those iconic movies that I think if you haven't seen it, you know the references from it. Yeah. Most people are age too. Well, so um, I guess what are your kind of first initial thoughts of of the movie now that we watched it? There, are, I mean, for me, there are always going to be little hangups just because of the date. The movie was released compared yeah, to now. 1982. Yeah. By the way. So there are all these like there are like little nitpicky things that will get me every now and then when I'm watching it. But I overall I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, it definitely has rewatchability for me. And there are parts that after seeing it that I know I'm gonna kind of look back at when I rewatch it and be like, oh god, I love this part. Yeah, and I think you were you were saying um that you really enjoyed one part of the scene too. Um Yeah, I already have a favorite they- scene. You already have a favorite yeah. scene with it. I mean, that's a sign of a good movie. I, I'd say too, like I, I enjoy the movie as well. Yeah. Um, I think there's still some things that don't, they don't necessarily hold up, <laughs> but there's some things that did, which was pretty cool to see. Yeah. So I, I just want to get some of the details regarding the movie. Uh, not so much what happens within the movie, but how it was made. So the director is um, Toby Hooper, who also did um, Chainsaw Massacre and Chainsaw Massacre Two. Run, none, 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 none. Run, none, none. Um, have you seen Chainsaw Massacre, the, the original? No. You haven't? No. Well, hopefully that's on our... It's definitely on our list. Okay, that's good. It's just a matter of time. A matter of spins. And you probably... So you haven't seen the second one either? No, absolutely Okay. Not. Well, both of them are pretty... I'd, I'd say... Uh, I mean, the first one's a classic, and the second one, I think, in, in its own way, a classic for... It's it's odd. Like, some of the characters, I think, stand out a lot, but the movie itself... Well, we'll get into it yeah, when we watch it. The cast. So we've got the Freeling family. With the father, played by Craig T. Nelson. He plays Steve Freeling, who I think he's the he's like a real estate, he's like real estate salesman. He's like in real estate sales. At first I thought he was like a real estate developer, and then he literally says a line, Well, I'm not a developer. Yeah. I think that's just because in some of the scenes you see him talking with his boss and yeah. they are talking about development for the majority of it. Right. Um and then uh you've got his wife Diane, who's um housewife played by Joe Beth Williams. You got Dominique Dune. Uh, she plays, is it Dana? I think it's Dana. Uh, she's a daughter. She's 16. And then you've got the two younger kids, Robbie and Carol Ann, Oliver Robbins and Heather O'Rourke. And so the the crux of this movie um, basically is about the Freeling family who live in California um, within this new housing development called Cuesta Verde. And they learn that their home is haunted and super spooky. Super spooky. They learn um, that Carol Ann is talking to their TV set. They catch um, her talking to the TV and mm-hmm. saying some pretty spooky shit. They said she said they're here. Classic line. Which we Classic did scene. notice that it, it, the ADR wasn't very it was good awesome. on it. Yeah. So her mouth looked like she was like, rah, rah, they're like here. When you, yeah, when you're drunk and yeah. you try and talk to someone. I'm sure that's what I sounded like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And we come to learn that those are actually ghosts that are trying to find their way into the light. Um, and she is the only one that can, they're, they're attracted to her, her 
like life force apparently and they believe that she will lead them into the light so they're the ones that take her in to this they end up taking her into this new dimension or this other dimension and then we learn later that they are also under control of a demon or some kind of devil or the devil um called the beast i i felt like it was I think at that point, you for me, I like really had to like pay attention to like some of these details because for me, it's like as soon as we start getting into like now it's in another dimension, there's they want this and this. Um, I'm like, oh, you're starting to lose me. But it's funny because uh, um, what's her name? Um, Ten Tangia Barons um, or Ten Tangina? I can't remember her name. Um, she like specifically is like, I'll dumb it down for you. These ghosts want this. She knows her audience. She knows. She knew exactly. I was like, oh, thank God. Thank you. But we can we can talk just a little bit more about the progression of the movie too, just kind of like on a surface level as to how she comes into play. But what did you think of the overall story to this to this movie? Yeah, I mean, I think the story is good. You see movies like that still being made. Like, you know, Insidious, I know that was a few years ago, but that was very similar where they take mm, the boy mm-hmm. into this kind of limbo where all of these souls are lonely and lost and hurt and they're attracted again to his life force. So right. it's a, it's, I think it's a pretty solid plot, especially for the time. And I, we talked about this during the movie. I really like the performance of probably 95% of of the actors and the performers in the movie. And I think those performances still hold up versus movies from the 1920s. The acting is completely different. It's really hard to kind of immerse yourself in that world when you just feel like you're watching actors act. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy um, these kind of movies too. And I think they took a, they took a appropriate time to kind of build on the family altogether and you know the the characteristics of each person whether or not they you know seem kind of it's a, uh, it's um, a like yeah. spot spot on or you know like this is the the angsty teenager this is the um the scaredy cat this is they yeah they definitely build the profiles pretty well mm-hmm. for the characters and they're it's not like this is a slow paced movie things happen pretty fast yeah uh, like really fast really though. fast like, yeah <laughs> but we've seen we've seen other movies where especially movies from the 80s where they don't take the time to build up those relationships and um again those characteristics and those personalities for each character or even like the dynamic of um them and their neighbor whether it's mm-hmm. you know fairly minimal yeah. on you know just bickering on I, and I, I, we're still not really sure how uh, we weren't born in the 80s, nor did we have 80s televisions like that growing up. But we weren't sure about like their whole battle that they had yeah, with the, each other. The remote battle. The remote that battle. Was funny, but yeah, no, I mean, like I said, we've we've gone over that before where movies seem to really rush that. And then they're just kind of rely on the like cliche like, oh, well, no, they're like they, you know, they're definitely in a relationship because that's a man and that's a woman. Right. So that's that's together. That's just, so there's a, yeah, yeah, there's a trust. There. So yeah, I do appreciate that from this movie that they they don't rush through things, but they don't. It's not a slow paced movie either. No, so they really found a good middle ground. It's for that. it's interesting. It kind of reminds like they didn't. I don't think they used jump scares, but the way that the they progressed from like, oh man, something spooky. Oh my god, the tree is coming <laughs> through the window. Like it's it 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 was something enough for me to be like, oh okay, now we're starting. Yeah. Or you know, here we are. Um, so I, I kind of like that too, yeah. compared to like a lot of movies where they're like, no, there's got to be a slow progression. You got to make your way. You can and bam. absolutely tell when something's about to happen in movies mm-hmm. nowadays. I will literally, I will mentally prepare myself because I'm like, okay, so now yeah. everything's kind of quiet. Mm-hmm. They're walking kind of slowly. Everything seems fine. And then boom, yep, there it is. Yep. But with this one, I didn't feel like it was as expected. In well, I mean, ways. like even before the first scene or before that first, uh, you know, scare. jump to yeah. the scare, it was like she was ex- the mom was excited. Diane was excited about this weird occurrence that was happening in their kitchen where things were moving back, you know, from one yeah. side to the other. And she was even using um, Carol Ann to as a test, as like a test <laughs> dummy, which um, which was really fun to see, too. Yeah. But also kind of like so you just you go from a chair to let me use my baby daughter. Well, I was actually so this is the like second time that we've watched it yep. recently. And 
I caught her saying that she was she was describing the feeling of being pulled, mm-hmm. and she was like, "It's like a tingling in your belly." So she was describing it um, pretty accurately or like uh, in detail to her husband. So now I'm kind of thinking that she probably did it herself before she tested it on Caroline. Probably, but yeah. maybe I'm just hoping for that. Because <laughs> why you would test it on like a two year old kid? <laughs> That's true. I, I, um. But yeah, I I mean, I like that. And like I said, I like the, some of the progression. And it happens again in the movie too, um, near the end with uh, the clown or, you know, like something. I guess then again, you kind of figured out something. They brought it back. So I guess like what we say is um, she gets taken into this other dimension to which we're um, brought the parapsychologist and her always lackeys. Always find them at a college. Every They're always at a college. college. has a department in the basement always <laughs> they're like we're underfunded and you're like well no shit of course you are um <laughs> there's only three of you ever <laughs> yeah uh i i i love the um performance uh her name is beatrice Strait, dr lash yeah i really liked her too she seemed very realistic mm-hmm. like someone that isn't trying to bullshit you and make you think that they're like all you know holier than i kind of well i mean like it's it's funny because at the beginning they were kind of like they were putting on their professional like we are professional yeah um parapsychologists and here's you know the latest of what we've done uh (laughs) which uh he said like we we did time lapse shot of a toy truck truck that moved seven feet in seven hours and they were like so you know you'd be pretty surprised with what Mm -hmm. we've seen and then right at that moment, the dad is like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. And he opens the door to the kids' room, which is where all of the paranormal activity is floating like, around. It's just swirling around and, like, music's playing and, like, lights are turning on. And so, yeah, that was really funny. But I think that, too, kind of explains why they had their kind of professional faces on. And then as soon as that happened, the glass is kind of shattered. The yeah. illusion is shattered of yep. them being professionals because they're clearly shooken up. She's drinking out of her own flask that she has. Yeah, too, she ends they... up like just like, and she ends up confessing to the mom too, she's just saying, "Oh, I'm terrified," yeah. <laughs> which, I, which, which is I love. Kind of, yeah, which it's is nice, very, like, it's very relatable because I mean, there's no way you're gonna see shit like that every Are day. Are they getting paid for what they're doing? I mean, I'm there? sure they're getting paid by the university in some way, probably very minuscule amounts yeah. of money, but they probably would be be paid be paid by the family because the family's trying to get whatever help that they need and they're desperate yeah. at that point who they're going to turn to i think either ghostbusters. way ghostbusters <laughs> i knew you were going to say that <laughs> um i think either way though like they have so much footage too that at especially at that time they're just like here take it well, show part, everyone the and they're like we're that rich but I, I hate is they're sitting down at the kitchen table after they've seen everything flying around in the kids room and they're going over like other creepy occurrences and like how this all started and they're sitting at the kitchen table and the light just kind of flickers on and off and the coffee pot moves from one end of the table yeah. to the next and one of um dr lush's guys her assistants has oh. a camera and they're like oh did you see that light turn on and off take a picture of that well what are you going to see if you take a picture a light or not a light you're not going to see it in motion like you would the coffee pot like right. moving or anything so that like that part always just kind of makes me laugh because i'm like what are, you, what are you taking a picture of? And maybe it just goes to like credence on, you know, their, How their experience. How they and, are. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, and I guess just to kind of wrap up the the story so we can get into some of the yeah. finer details. They end up saving Carol Ann because um, for one, they got Dr. Lesh yes. and she suggested a, um, what is Taninga technically? She's like. Yeah, she's some kind of clairvoyant person who works in the paranormal field who they describe as she's cleaned many houses so yeah. she's done a lot of so like this work of before yeah. yeah so she has um experience in exorcism okay so essentially she's like the big guns because they had she's to send so the small. kids away <laughs> you know she's so small <laughs> they uh they had to send the kids away because it was um Which that's just just too dangerous yeah scene. we'll talk about that yeah. um and she she helps them essentially save Carol Ann, to which you think the movie is you think is that's pretty kind much of done. it because they've gone through um, so much already. But really, what they did is they helped the some of the ghosts on the other end make it to the light, but the beast uh, is still there. Yeah, I feel like they help the almost non threatening yeah. life forms pass on, and but they still have this. But they still have their major problem. 
to which it comes back, creates, creates havoc, and we see a lot more of some like practical effects that are really cool, like along with some of some of the visual effects that probably didn't look too great. But anyways, it comes back, tears up the house, they all run out of the house, and then it basically just implodes on itself, the whole house itself. Well, and you find out the very specific reason why this is all happening. Right. We find out that this new housing development that the father has been a part of, he's been a real estate agent or real estate sales um, specifically with this housing development. He even received a somewhat of a promotion from his boss um, who's in charge of all of this development. He had hinted at more housing to be developed for phase five, which turns out he wanted to move a, an active graveyard. Active graveyard. A deactive graveyard. I'm assuming. Graveyard. I'm assuming the deactive active because I'm assuming <laughs> they still have people come in. Yeah. Um, and suggest just like relocating, and it's not that big of a deal, and they've done it before. But it turns out that they did do it before, exactly right where the, this family, this family lives, except they didn't remove the the uh, bodies. The bodies. They, they just, just did the headstones. The headstones. Which is pretty crazy, if you ask Dude, me. He the yeah, and he just starts screaming, "I'm on the bodies, lies, lies." Which, I, like I said, I, I thought he said "why," which I mean, I still think kind of works. Both work, yeah. Lies, sure. Um, I think I like why better. So uh, the house implodes, leaves the Bosch is kind of flabbergasted, and then the family Moves gets on, out of there. Gets out of there. Goes to the local Holiday Inn, and that's where we kind of pushes left. the TV out of the room. Yeah, it gets and they TV. said, "Done." It'll ruin your eyes. It'll ruin your eyes. So, with that said, <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the performances. I, I really like Carol Ann, the youngest I think daughter. Both of the young kids did mm-hmm. and, amazing and jobs. Robbie, yeah. yeah, it's almost like I was thinking. I was like, I wish I saw more Carol Ann, but then part of me was like, No, no just this is probably, too yeah. much of a good thing. Just I think it was good the way it was. Yeah. And these are all the thoughts I have in my head. And I'm like, Oh, you're right. I guess well, you just, just have to talk yourself. I got to talk myself. Yep. Yeah. Um, she was awesome. She was really sweet. Uh, she was funny when she needed to be she funny. She was a really adorable kid without mm-hmm. being obnoxious. Exactly. Right? And the same like thing with the boy, so too. You see that so often where it's, oh, I don't really like you. I kind of want to punch you in your face. I liked, I didn't, I, I liked the dynamic between all three of the kids. Mm-hmm. I'd say I probably like the teenage daughter probably less over the um, two younger kids. Absolutely, yeah. She was okay. I, I don't know. She played I, too much into the stereotype of like, well, I'm a teenager yeah. and, you know, kind of a thing. But like you said, I did like the dynamic between all three of the kids and the family as well. Oh, I yeah. think they all played kind of that typical family without having to like really like the kids really hate each other. But, you know, they get in scraps and stuff like that. But at yeah. the end of the day, they just... Eh, and it. I like how we were talking about uh, Robbie too, where... He truly is still a kid Mm -hmm. and you see him doing like the typical little boy thing where you act tough about something or you act like you know something. He was talking about how he knew about weed um, with (laughs) the teenage stuff. He did know. So um, that was, there was some truth to that, but uh, like a scene later, he's screaming mommy, mommy, because he's actually like legitimately scared. And you have that little like kid scream from him, which I, you know, I don't know, I I feel like you don't get that anymore. No. I want to you hear a little kids. I want some scared kids. I'm tired of all these other kids that just don't care and don't give a shit. Yeah. I want to see Where's them Where's the fear in their voice? Oh, my God. Um, and then the other, uh, we brought up Beatrice uh, or Dr. Leash. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lash. Right. Yeah, uh, Lash. She's awesome. And then um, Taninga Barons, the she yeah. was awesome too. Um, she's like a cherry on top. Yeah, yeah. Especially like near... Um, that part of the movie where you're just like, wow, there's, I, I felt like there was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And then she came in and just gave it a whole nother dynamic. Also brought in the rest of the, you know, plot of the movie and explaining what is happening. And I feel like she wasn't in the movie too much yeah. where you ha- a lot of times you have these like really crazy kooky characters and they're just, they kind of infiltrate the whole movie yeah. and that's what you're left with. But she just is a very big presence in these few scenes and then she kind of exits which i like she's there to do her job and she did or at least she thought she did she did in a way she cared very much about yeah she she cared very much about like these other ghosts that need to go to the light um and that was a big you know portion as to like how she had them go to the light but the only way they they'll go is if carol ann Carol Ann is also doing that and then the mom didn't want or that the a, BH, well no, dr lesh they, they also all, said don't do that yeah they all were arguing against like she sits down 
the mom and tells her before they go into this whole thing, you need to listen to whatever I say, even if it goes against your belief as like yeah. a human and a Christian and a mother, like all of these things. And the mom just She's like, yes, absolutely yes. on board. Give me my kid back. And then as soon as she says, okay, tell her to go towards the light, the mom what? screams, no, I'm no. not going to lie to my daughter. Do you want your kid you back want? or not? She did. She's like, it's it's this or death. Yeah. So yeah, what are you going to do? Like, even when she said, talk cross to your daughter, be upset with your daughter and the dad, uh, they're arguing. They're like, we don't we do not do that. Yeah. It's like, just, just not in shut, this house. Yeah, just shut up and do it. Um, I, I think something to the note, I think, uh, is the visual effects with the movie as well. And because at the time we have Taninga come in, that's when we're seeing like a lot of different visual effects coming through. Um, and I think I, I, at first I said the scenes hold pretty well on their own. And then I kind of changed it to some of the scenes some hold up pretty scenes, well. Yeah. I changed it as soon as I saw the tornado and they're like, look at the tornado. Yeah, the I'm like, tornado Ooh. that kind of rips through them and sucks up the evil tree. Yeah. And then you said the the hand, the hand looked like a like a fart. <laughs> like the wispy hands. Yeah, the the presence that comes out of the the screen the first time when she says they're here. Yeah. It just it looked like a cartoon fart to me. Yeah. I could see that. I'll stand by that. Um and then uh the the steak scene. <gasps> which there's different levels to that, but um I thought it looked good. I have a lot of issues with the yeah. steak scene. Yeah. Why, why don't we talk about the steak scene? Okay. So at this point, they're staying overnight to Dr. Lesh and her two assistants are staying overnight after they've seen a bunch of paranormal activity. And one of the assistants, everyone else is asleep. One of the assistants goes in for a midnight snack and they're staying at the family's house. Yep. So they're just, you know, it's not and it's not like this is a prolonged stay. It's just an overnight thing. And you see him first finishing off a bag of Cheetos, which product placement there was in our face. Just literally. That's how in they our started face. the scene. Yeah. And so he finishes off a bag of Cheetos. Then he go he's still hungry, so he goes in to the kitchen. I think he grabs some Ritz crackers too. He eats a couple of Ritz crackers, yep. He eats a couple More Ritz product crackers. Placement. Yep. And then he goes, opens the fridge, and he grabs a chicken wing and just starts eating that. At that point I'm like, Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. But then Who's he gonna grabs, notice a, a It's chicken a chicken wing. wing. You got people. Or a say, chicken drum. A chicken drum, whatever. But then he goes back into the fridge. And this is where I take issue. Because he goes <laughs> back into the fridge and he takes out like a full T bone steak. Issue number one. I would be so pissed if I had someone coming in doing work in my house and they ate a steak. A big fat steak. I mean an I uncooked Hell yeah. big fat steak. I, I would be livid. I, I'm already livid and this hasn't happened. In I your agree life. with the hunger. I don't agree with, you know, how he's going about it, you know? I uh, I understand getting yeah. cravings. I'm always hungry. I'm never not hungry. I've never had a craving that like I've been hungry at other people's houses, but I've never had a craving or even if there's been times where they're like, Yeah, eat whatever you want. I still don't do that and at then, other like, people's houses. No, but even then, even if they were to they're like, Yeah, just whatever. It doesn't matter to me. You take out the steak and they go, Well, what are you you're gonna eat the steak? I would like I got chips or something. Yeah, I would nanny for kids for eight hours and I would eat as little as yeah. possible because I felt so guilty. But that's my own issue. But so and then he so he <laughs> takes out the steak and he just slaps it on the countertop. Yep. No plate, no nothing. I'm like, okay, you're ruining the countertop. You're gonna make that you gotta clean it yep. now. And you're messing up the steak that you shouldn't be eating in the first place. But the issue is is that the steak looks completely fake. It How was looks, he gonna cook it? Was he just gonna eat on the stove top? Yeah, he's just going to make a full meal. And smoke up the house. He's going to make a nice peppercorn brandy sauce. You think he's put, yeah, you think he's doing any of that? He's probably, he puts like a little pinch of salt on it and he's like, all right, good. Yeah, he probably cooks it like extra well done. Oh my God. (laughs) That's true. Like such a waste of a steak too. Not only is he eating their steak, he's... He's he's like overcooking it to the point where you're like, well, you're like he didn't cook wow. it at all. This is our That's own. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're creating so, yeah, more we're, than we're what it really is. But so he the steak looks very fake, and so he slaps it on the countertop, and then it starts. It, it basically becomes haunted itself, and yep. it starts kind of like inching along like a little inchworm across the countertop, and that's where it really just it looks so plasticky. I can't it can't stand it, and then it looks like basically someone cut up raw chicken. And started like pushing it through the through other, the top. yeah, or through, through the, the center of through it, through the center of the steak. So the steak is like 
it's basically like alien where yeah. the little alien pops out of the guy's stomach and but it's just cut up raw I thought, chicken. I thought that looked good. The not chicken? like good looking. I meant like <laughs> the um visual, not like, the inching, but it's the visual where there's like Yeah, I definitely I was gro- yeah, I was grossed steak. out by that. So right. I think that was good. But the um, inching of the steak and the steak itself no. looked so bad. Yeah. Um and then, and then it's well, funny like the just the chicken drummy they just have that on the ground, and then and they're then like, "What do we do? We'll just maggots. put maggots on it." And I'm like, "I mean, yeah, I <laughs> that guess. still works." I get very creeped out by yeah. maggots. So, and then not long after that, he goes into the utility closet, which it looks like a utility closet or something yeah, like it's, that. It's something, and like he it. just yeah. finds stuff on his face, and he just decides to just just tear it off. He's, yeah, he's just looking at chunk himself in chunk. the mirror, and he has all of a sudden a big cut. And so we see him, and the makeup looks good then. And then it cuts down to the sink, and you can see blood dripping in the sink. And then it cuts yeah. back, and then all of a sudden we have it's a just, really you're like, shitty who is this? Wax yeah. like <laughs> it's just, it's, it did not hold up. It looks so bad. I can't get over yeah. it. And you can tell. I was telling Rob when we were watching it. It looks like those gray dogs that used to be um in kids shows or something and they just had like, the dog heads and then they had the human bodies with the hands and like Ugh. the dogs would be it was really funny it was cute this reminded me of it okay. so it's not the image that i want to see when i'm watching it's a just, horror movie I, yeah i i mean i think the uh the execution is kind of just gone at this point i'm sure at the time it was whoa holy I shit at the time i don't know but um also fun fact um that also is uh, Steven Spielberg's hands because he was a part of this movie, mm-hmm. which I guess was a whole a whole thing where um, people or uh, they were saying that this movie basically was directed by Steven Spielberg and not Toby Hooper. Um, poor Hooper. Poor Hooper. <laughs> um, but apparently they said like Steven's, but they couldn't they couldn't have him as the director because he was doing E. T., which mm-hmm. literally came out like the same week or two weeks prior. Jesus, that guy's busy. Right? Um, and so instead, and, and even like acknowledging um, outwards, Steven Spielberg is like, nope, he, Toby's the director, not me. But of course, he's going to also say that yeah. because he's under contract and he's yeah, not he supposed to. can't do it. Yeah. But apparently people, um, or people that worked on the movie had said that Steven Spielberg was there for almost all of the whole process and toby wasn't as much as he was oh. <laughs> um steven spielberg literally was hands-on with this yeah. movie so um interesting to uh to kind of learn about when mm-hmm. we were doing some some fun fact kind of uh searches about this movie and then uh some of the other shots that we thought were interesting the uh the glitter when <gasps> oh. carol ann was getting pulled into the portal yeah. through the uh through the closet so, yeah, I mean, the scene is the kids are sleeping and then all this crazy stuff happens. Carol Ann starts to get pulled in, like sucked into this her is, closet. This is while the brother Robbie is getting eaten by is the tree. Getting eaten by a and tree. then everyone leaves the house to go see him, which, yeah, I understand to a point, but you're also like, there's a child in the same I don't know. room I that feel was like there pulled. Should, yeah, there should be some protective maternal level that kind of kicks in there. Are the babies in like, here? Grab the babies. Get him, grab right. the bebis. Keep the bebis yep. with me. Yeah, so Robbie and his whole family, they're out freaking out, trying to get him out of a tree, a very hungry tree. Carol Ann's still in her bedroom, in her bed, and this is when the closet swings open. All of a sudden, there's this force that's pulling her and everything else in the room. Like, posters get ripped off the wall. Everything yep. is, like, cleaned out. But the whole time she's getting pulled, they must have dumped like all 10 from, like, gallons under her bed. of glitter. It there's all came just, from under her there's bed. There's so many scenes where all of a sudden you just see this big pile of <laughs> glitter just moving across the room. Uh, it's insane. I know I know. little kids love arts and crafts. Okay. I probably have a container of glitter somewhere in here too. I like. I, like I don't know anyone who has that, that much. much glitter. I like to think all the ghosts in the other dimension are just like covered in Fabulous. glitter. And they're like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> And because uh, they're, I mean, they're all covered in pink goo, apparently, too, like the pink slime. So they're so sticky. They're all sticky. They have a reflective kind of light element to them, mm-hmm. too. And now they have a bunch of glitter. Yep. So I'm thinking, party. It's time to party. It's, 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 it's a time basically to party. disco party. The beast is here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that was pretty funny to see. And then. It was just, it was so much glitter that you, you definitely focus on the glitter. Yeah. Um, there's a kind of a cool scene. The more that I think about this, there, there was a lot of different effects that they use. So like mm-hmm. the rotating bedroom scene where yeah. Diane is getting pulled. Yep. She has a force that's just kind of dragging her across the entire room, like walls, ceilings, everything. So that was, I think they did a really good job with that. And I'm assuming that's what they did. I didn't actually like look up to see, yeah. but I can only, uh, they did that in Inception. I remember, and I remember mm-hmm. seeing things from that. So that's kind of how I 
Um, and then the demon dog, which I, I think is the beast. That was mm, like, what yeah. What was that? I don't know. Like, we don't actually get to see the beast. There's, this is kind of the second round of the hauntings. The kids are in the bedroom and mm-hmm. they're trying, they're being um, sucked in again to the closet and the mom's trying to get to them. And then all of a sudden she's right as she's about to go to the door, there's this giant skeleton. And it reminds me, I was listening to something where they're talking about the 20 foot skeleton that you can buy at Home Depot <laughs> this year. Have you seen <laughs> Yes, that? you showed me that. It, reminds me, it reminded me of that. <laughs> Where I'm like, my God, they were ahead of their time. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> that thing sold out. But so it's basically a crouching giant skeleton. And it almost looks like the legs are almost like frog-like in the way yeah. that it's sitting. And then it has this like long kind of flowy hair. hair. And it has that kind of it's like underwater. It's very 80s. It, the look is very, very 80s. It reminded me of like 80s. Ghostbusters kind of in the, the glow. Me of Ghostbusters. And... Or, yeah, there are a lot of things that reminded me yeah. of. So, I, but And it's one of those things where it... Right now, it looks really cheesy, but I still like it. It's it, it's part it's, of like the aesthetic of the movie. Yeah, the I mean, I don't know if it's, again, one of those nostalgic things where you said you see it in a lot of movies or if it's just... That's the thing. I don't, I don't know, know. even know if we even have that much nostalgia to this movie. I don't, you know what I mean? ha- like no, I don't have that much nostalgia to this movie, but... It's not like we're like, fangirling and fanboying to this movie. It's just, we're fan pursuing to... Uh, this uh, this movie is just like yeah I I do I agree I, maybe it's just a uh, yeah like the aesthetic to like the eighties mm-hmm. um, and I'm just like ooh I like that yeah because we've seen other kind of classic old movies that yeah. we do not we are not fans of no um, <laughs> let's talk about the clown too since we're uh, talking about things getting sucked clown. in I I I'm still because they don't talk about the clown no at all mm-hmm. um, yet the clown is always placed right at the foot of Robbie's bed. He's placed in a chair mm-hmm. facing this facing kid him. who is the most terrified of everything right. in the family. And it's placed right, like just staring directly at him, staring him down as he's trying to fall asleep. And the clown's ugly. Yeah. It's it's to me, like I, what I was saying was like, I, I feel like it's some kind of family heirloom or it's like, like it was like one of the parents what that they had as a kid or whatever. I feel like it's something, and, it looks like something a grandparent would get when they did their one trip to Europe <laughs> and, you know, and they're like, oh, you should have seen this shop. It had all these painted masks and we got this cute oh, little, God. you know, it's one of those things. It's yeah. Just like, oh, really? It's just like to me because. The whole room is filled with Star Wars toys, you Star know, Wars posters. Toys, posters, and then like everything, you even other Barbies, toys, classic stuff like that. There's other toys that are like a product of that time, yeah. literally at that time. Mm-hmm. Either they just came out, and like if you think about it too, it's like where the kids have everything. Mm-hmm. And in reality, you're like, holy shit, you have so much. It's oh my gosh, yeah. Even just watching it, we're like, God, tone it down. Yeah, like Star Wars. So that's why, like, I just thought, like, maybe there, it's the parents because it, it was so out of place mm-hmm. that I thought it was like it had to be like the parents or something, and they're forcing it on their kid. Where there's like, look, I love this it thing. But why don't you? Yeah, it definitely felt out of place. I guess I would have liked it more if it they would have given it a little bit more of an explanation as to why it was there, or if they had Carol Ann because the two shared a room. Even if they had like, circus stuff that clearly Carol Ann liked, like you know, circus elephants and performers or something like that then that would make a little bit more sense her side of the room was really boring by the way too just like green lines it was like a dark green with a lime green kind of like uh lines it is in the decor on her side was kind of just like that and then his was like star wars aesthetic and like you know like boy stuff but like hers didn't even really have that much on her side so the room itself looked what kind of odd girl doesn't like green lines So where the hell did that clown come from? <laughs> I'm just saying it was lame, okay? It was um, lame. The, um, the clown too, like uh, apparently he was like nearly strangled by the clown um, during that scene um, because the puppet <laughs> so itself- So much shit happened with yeah, that movie. Yeah, because the puppet itself like malfunctioned. Oh so he was actually getting my choked God. by it. And they, he, he's been asked about that too, about like how this movie is haunted. He's and like, he's I like, don't I don't believe. He said, nothing happened to me on set because some people during set said stuff happened to them. Um, mm-hmm. And he has said like, nothing happened to me on, or like on set that was paranormal, he felt. But he did get choked by that puppet. Um, he got choked by the clown. Like by the clown. The movie. Yeah. The terror that you see on his face is real too. I mean, I feel, I, you and know what? The same thing goes with those, his sister. Yeah. One of these weird things happen. Fine, yeah, it's just that's just you know yeah. whatever. 
but when all of the weird things happen yeah um and i i guess we could also go with or, or talk about some of the spooky things that happen within this there are a movie lot as of well. weird things that are associated in real with this life movie. real life weird things so I, I think a lot of people already know about the deaths um that happened not during the movie but one was directly after the movie not too long after and then another one was a couple years down the road so we're talking 82 to like 87 i think mm-hmm. 87 or 86 mm-hmm. but before those zelda rubenstein who was Taninga. She claimed to have a vision of her dog telling her goodbye. And that actress's mother told her hours later that her dog actually had died that day. This is something she claimed, but I don't know. And then another kind of claim that actually happened on set was the mom, um, Diane. She claimed that she'd come home from set to find pictures on her wall were all crooked and that, um, she'd realign them but find them crooked again five minutes later well i mean that's easily explained like you're shutting doors you're shutting cabinets boom that's it anything you could be walking around i've walked around every time i hit like a certain part of the floor like picture frames just kind of exactly it's exactly you need to work out you bumble around i do bumble um just kind of roll around. <laughs> <laughs> and then i guess just to go into the to the actual deaths that did happen um the older sister she she had died um, actually just months after the release of Poltergeist. So I'm not sure what the time frame was between her being done with her role and then in between that. But Doesn't matter. It's connected to the movie. Yeah, it's connected to the movie. So she she played the older sister and she was actually strangled by her ex-boyfriend. Um, and uh, because they had broken up or and something had happened where he found her at her house and she jealous. was... yeah. And um, a few weeks later, uh, he, from breaking up with him, he had gone in, um, he'd strangled her, he had beat her, and then she basically was put on life support and then um, had died a few days later because her parents had pulled the cord because there wasn't any brain activity, unfortunately. So um, she had passed away. And then, like I said, yeah, like in in 87, the youngest child, Carol Ann, she passed away from a long misdiagnosed intestinal abnormality. Her and her family were on a vacation and she had claimed that um, she wasn't hungry, but she also had stomach pains. And um, it basically was, she had to go into surgery for a uh, bowel obstruction to which she died in surgery. Um, And this was, the rumor was that she had died while making Poltergeist 3 and that a stunt double had to complete her scenes. Was she in Poltergeist well. too? I think so. I've um, never seen the sequels. I haven't either. Her family claimed that she'd long finished shooting uh, when she died. Um, but the director of the movie, Poltergeist 3, had said that the movie had to be rewritten to accommodate her absence as well. Um, either way, she unfortunately passed away from a miss or a, a long misdiagnosed condition unfortunately that's sad that is sad. she, she was, was awesome she's a really cute mm-hmm. cute little girl um so i i well there's also another spooky thing in this the other spooky thing was the um the skeletons in the pool i would be so pissed <laughs> why would you be pissed i wonder so explain so yeah. um this, their skeletons in the pool later on in the near the end of the movie. They're building a pool and they never finish it, and it's all muddy. And this is and around the time yep, when you find um, out that like, and the, yeah, they this didn't is, move the bodies exactly. And then all the bodies just start coming up out of the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, Diana's in the pool. She accidentally falls in the pool, which again, I'm like, she's just. I, I get that she's you know freaking out and she's trying to get the neighbor's attention and stuff. And then she just like steps, missteps and falls in the pool. It looked very dramatic to me. She's like, Oh no. I didn't think it looked too pool. dramatic. You didn't I think when she got out too, and she went, Oh, I'm going back was, in. That was not okay. She should have just right. been able to stand. Up, um, so anyway, she, she goes into the water and then some skeletons pop out and they're just going, ah, and she screams. Um, apparently it's claimed that the muddy skeletons were real and that Spielberg actually had used them because they were supposedly cheaper than, um, artificial ones. I like, that's my favorite. Rumor. It's crazy. But like, from what I've seen, this is always still questioned as mm-hmm. real. 
And then apparently, though, what if it is possible that the skeletons were real in Poster, Poltergeist 2? I don't mean if. Apparently it is. Um, supposedly that led Samson to perform an after hours exorcism on the set to dispel bad karma. Samson, I'm assuming, is a character on in Poltergeist 2, but apparently they had to do after hours exorcisms on the set because oh, that Jesus could have been a thing. Christ. So, and I'm not, I like the idea that they used real skeletons too, I love too, that. I right? mean, I love the idea that, you know, a movie like that could get away with it. If, if anything, I think it gives credit to the person, the set designer, like those that, you know, really work on the scene and work on the set. If those are fake, they look great, right? Like it's, cap to if you. I was that person, I'd be like, thank you. I would just take it as a compliment, whether or not, like, I'm I'd like, it's sitting, not real. Yeah, I made that. I'd just be like, just kind of. Yes. Rubbing my hands. Counting my money. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't do that again. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think that's kind of all the, just the visual effects besides the house um, imploding on itself. Yeah, the little miniature house. Little that, miniature. Yeah, implodes at the end. And would you say that's like superimposed on into the scene where, because they have uh, yeah, the boss standing there. Yeah, because they do have the boss standing down the street, so it has to be. Right. Yeah. Um, I thought that looked cool. And then there was just like some kind of odd cuts between some of the scenes um, that yeah. we were like, we were wondering if we cut or like if we accidentally skipped ahead or something. Well, yeah, there's one of the first kind of paranormal um, occurrences that you see with Diane, the mom and the chair that she's showing her husband that slides across the kitchen floor. She goes to talk to him and explain, I've been doing this all day and blah, 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 blah. And then it just cuts to them at their neighbor's house. And I can't tell if they're high or not or if they're just freaked out. With the neighbors? No, no, no. The, oh, the parents. They yeah. were acting like they, it, though. They were acting like they were high because they forgot the neighbor's name for a second. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, and the way on. they laughed. And the way yeah. they laughed. It just, I mean, Well, whatever. speaking of high, they were getting high earlier in the movie. Yeah. Which we were talking about how we liked um, the... The way that they did it wasn't too like crazy. Like, oh, they're smoking weed. It was they're having yeah, fun. It they're, seemed very much like a some nice like chemistry. They're having a glass of wine yeah. at the end of the night. The kids are all put to bed. They're just hanging out, just the two of them, and they're just kind of rolling a few oh, the small 80s. joints. So yeah, I did. I did love that part too, where it was just. It seemed. It didn't seem as nefarious no, as nowadays. Very casual. Like, oh, the parents are smoking weed and they're in the basement. Like, they got back you know, to their their old stash. They're play, that yeah, they're they playing. You know, well, I don't know what, but. but what about their like weed etiquette? I get <laughs> I get so mad when I watch the dad try and roll a joint because okay, first of all, if you're not how you roll the weed, if you are not good at rolling a joint, that's fine. You know what? Practice makes perfect. You're not gonna know it right away. You know, it takes ten thousand hours to become an expert in anything. But if you know that you're not good, you don't roll it on your fucking bed that's a knitted fabric. Yeah. So all the li- you're losing all that weed. You roll it on a piece of paper, a book, something that you can scrape the weed off of. But you know what? Maybe that's just me. Maybe they have just money to literally. I was burn. just gonna say they're, maybe me. they're rolling in that money. There's no freaking way. And when I was in college, I was I was saving every, every little, single little tiny morsel. nugget. They was like all over the bed is scattered and he's just like reading a book. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's just, it looks like he dumped out. Dumped. Dumped out one, one of the joints. Like he yeah. started, put all the weed in there, couldn't roll it properly and then just he's dumped like, ah, it out. There's whatever. just, there's so much there. And then a few moments later after the mom has successfully rolled it and she does it over the weed box that they have all of their weed in, such so again saving the bedding yep. but so once they that's all rolled and they're kind of smoking it their son comes in and he's just like i can't sleep the tree is scaring me i can't sleep, it, I can't sleep. <laughs> why not son <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I had to throw in that <laughs> we've been we've been talking like that for we've been watching penny dreadful yeah. and just are trying to perfect his oh. cockney accent but <laughs> anyway so the son comes in and he can't fall asleep. And so the parents are like, oh, okay, don't worry. But before the mom goes to the sun, she takes another... One for the road. Okay, don't yeah. know what's wrong. Kind of. <laughs> Which, I Which don't is know. funny. I, I love it. It's funny not too. anything that like I hate or anything like that. But I just think Speaking it's, like, of, like, it's really funny. Speaking of funny scenes too, there were there were a couple of pretty, funny pretty good moments, funny moments. Yeah. Like one was... What was your favorite? My favorite scene, which is... It's just this very obscure little moment. But there... 
the kids are being sent off to school. Yep. And Carol Ann, she still stays at home with her mom. And this is after the first time she hears the TV people and she's watching the static and the scene where she says they're here. And so this is the next morning after. So they're in the kitchen. They have this little TV and she turns it on. She's just watching the static again. And so you're led to assume she's communicating with the TV people. And everyone's kind of busily walking around her, getting ready for school, going, leaving. And the mom walks by and she goes, oh, honey, don't watch that. You'll ruin your eyes. And she changes it. And it's this like war movie (laughs) where people are dying. And she's just like this little tiny. Any pre preschool girl, yeah. so it's just, just I, watching it, and just like, just like, boom, boom, boom. it had to be intentional, it, right? There's, there's no, no way. way they did that without knowing what they were doing. It's just, it's so hilarious. <laughs> I love it so much. And uh, my favorite part was when um, they're about to go into the portal, and uh, Diana's talking to Taninga, and Taninga's like, "I'm going in there." <laughs> And the mom's like, no, why? She doesn't even know you. Why would you go in there? She's like, you've never done this before. And then she's like, neither of you. And then to which she like stops for a second. She's got, there's all this whooshing around. Yeah, there's like all there's like chaos happening. And you look at her to like take that in. And she, it's it's almost like it was like off script. And she's like, like neither of you. That's happening. Yeah. And she's like, uh, yo, right. You go. <laughs> You can kind of so see good. like her like, kind of like pull back yeah, her head she, and think. It's like, like regardless of what was happening, she was like, oh, you're like, right. I really can't argue that. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah, you go. Okay. It was. I, I just That's really like that moment, scene too. Yeah. Um, oh, another scene that it's not is definitely not a favorite scene of mine. It also has to deal with people eating food that they shouldn't be. <laughs> okay. I think I'm just hungry. Yeah, you got to. But in the kitchen, the kids are getting leaving for school again, and they're having their pool dug. So they have workers around, and one of their kitchen windows is open, and right next to the kitchen window is the stove with this chili that the mom's making. And a worker just pops his head in, like, you know, a hobo smelling delicious pie, and starts drinking her coffee, starts looking around. He takes the wooden spoon that's been in the chili and eats from it. And takes a bite of chili, puts it back in the chili. And the mom comes up at that moment. She goes, hey, Bluto, how does it taste? (laughs) I would be so pissed that these creepy workers, because they are, there is a moment where they are. They're ogling her own daughter. I'm not, yeah, they're hitting on her 16-year-old daughter, these grown men. So it's like, oh, man, that pissed me off so much. Because I definitely, I love to cook. So if some random stranger comes comes in and takes a bite and puts it back in Some of your white chili? They go, mm. I would turn the burner on high, wait till that thing's bubbling, and then I'd Come back, put bitch. it in his face and burn his face. Um, I, I think we so went. that wasn't a favorite. No, I think, <laughs> I, I mean, that, that was very noticeable or like a notable kind of scene. That hurts me. Um, I want to go over just a couple more fun facts, and then let's jump into the IMDb reviews. Yeah. Um, so the last kind of couple facts that I have, apparently in 1969, there was an Indian burial ground unearthed during the construction of a supermarket in Agora Hills, California. And apparently this is the Los Angeles suburb where Poltergeist would be filmed ah. in 1981. Um, once again, these are just facts that I pulled online and who knows what is and what isn't. But it's kind of cool we're, to think we're about. We're going to say right now that these are uh, these are true. We're going to go are with that. These yeah. 100 You heard it here. 100% true. In this moment right now. Right now. And now they're not. <laughs> um, um, and then the last one I have is uh, this, the chair stacking scene. Um, mm-hmm. The continuous shot kind of. That was really good. That was really good too. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was going to say it was really good too. It was done with one shot, no cuts. When the camera panned away from the chairs multiple crew members rushed in and replaced them with a pre-stacked set of chairs Mm -hmm. um, before the camera panned back and then thus you have the chairs um which i thought was pretty neat i liked too how because sometimes you see scenes where they do something similar to that and like the one of the chairs is like shaking or something so it's like someone had just walked away from it or so like some force had just gotten done like messing with it right where i don't know i kind of like how nothing was moving yeah you know yeah i think that's still. a little eerier right i mean like they pan back and then one of the chairs just like is still wobbling or something like it just happened i'd rather have it just be completely still, still. yeah i would too Great. um shut up about I- it <laughs> 
I mean, think about it like today. They're going to use like CG or something yeah. in some weird way. They're like, well, might as well. Why don't we just do it ourselves? Why would we CG it? Okay. <laughs> That's movies today, Poor unfortunately. Pluto. <laughs> Poor Pluto. So let's move over to the IMDb reviews. We kind of like after each movie that we watch, regardless if it's a spooky movie or if it's just a regular movie, kind of like to see other people's perspectives too. Uh, We have our own, but it's nice to read what other people are saying. There's multiple different average review scores for movies. Um, I'm specifically looking at our age range, which is 20 to 29 um closer to 20 oh god (laughs) and uh they break it down by like male and female so males typically rate it um 7.2 where female typically rates it seven huh (laughs) i was just thinking of the number i was gonna give so this is interesting yeah um so the first review is titled vastly overrated five out of ten poltergeist is a tremendously overrated movie I watched it again the other day for the first time in 20 years and had the same exact reaction as the first time. Oh, I'm sure you did. The plot simply doesn't hold together. What? There are too many elements introduced in the story or hinted at, and many of them never explained properly or paid off later. What? (laughs) It's classic mediocre script writing. Steven Spielberg is a terrific director, but a middling writer. He wrote this story about some of his childhood fears and recollections, and the movie plays like a disjointed series of set pieces, which are only partially related by a poorly thought out framing story. I feel like he's referencing the clown. I think that's exactly what I was just going to say, too. Uh, Like, out of most things that happen, that's kind of really the only thing I really can think of where they're like, ooh, that's extra spooky. Let's have that in there, too. But the thing is, is you can argue that um, the exorcist, she says at one point in the movie that this creature this beast already knows what your fears are Mm. and it's playing off of that robbie's fear one of his fears the tree and the clown that was very apparent right off the bat yeah so the kind of thunder and thunder if if this person's person is referencing the clown right which i would assume just because he talks about steven spielberg's fears that's kind of explained yeah I mean, I don't think you need to explain every single thing directly. No. But that is a nice way to tie a lot of things They love to possess clowns or they love to possess little toys. Exactly. Like, you're not going to say that. They love to possess trees and clowns and glitter. She says it in her her voice. (laughs) Specifically trees and toys. Um, First, it's about unsettled ghosts. Then it's hinted in one scene that Satan is involved somehow, which... It's not hinted. They say it. I mean, they don't say it's Satan. They say the beast or beast. beast. And from what I see online, there are like how other people are, you know, describing the movie. They describe that more as a demon than Satan. That's and I did. We did bring that up uh, during the movie um, because I was kind of confused about what is it supposed to be a demon or is it actually Satan? I assumed it was Satan. When you hear beast, I would assume that, but or the beast, yeah, especially when they qualify with the beast, right? So he also goes on to say this and how it relates to the ghosts is never explained. Then corpses start breaking through the ground. So why now? Some six to seven years after the house was built over the graves? I was curious about that where I do. I do agree with that part. I don't remember them Mm -hmm. explaining why this would happen so late after. Um, They do talk about how this is a poltergeist and poltergeist can happen for a few months and then be done. So you, you know, someone could say that, well, because this is a poltergeist. I would assume it's because of Carol Ann. Because she was so, right. Yeah. Took some time. She needed to learn how to talk before she can talk because they had to have, she had to talk to the ghost, right? She's not going to talk to him as a baby. You could, I mean, the dog was communicating in some way. He brought them the ball. It's trying. That's true too. (laughs) That's a special dog. Don't get me wrong. Um, where have all these spirits been for seven years? Again, this is never explained. And why only in this one house if the whole subdivision was built over mm-hmm. the graves? I was also thinking about that too. Yeah, I think those two points are yeah. pretty. Um, and what's the deal with the tree that grabs the sun and tries to devour him? Can anyone tell me what the hell this has to do with the rest of the story as it plays out? Um, because I'm not, because I, I sure can't. Just another action set piece. I mean- we kind of connected that with a, a, that the whole a clown. Thing that's and, haunted. Like right. it's just, yeah, they're just playing on his fears. Um, 
In classic bad script fashion, the characters suddenly start acting clueless in order to further the action. After all, that's just happened. The family decided to spend one more night in the house, and the mother lets the children sleep in the same room, I which at the center of the evil. I do too. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> Even Toby Hooper's direction is slow and plotting, and many of the scenes just don't pack the wallop they should. IMDb states that Spielberg held Hooper back, so this may not have been his fault, but it's still a problem with this movie. Hmm. Interesting. There are definitely some points in there that I agree with. Mm -hmm. They go on to say, like, I'm sorry, and these seem like nitpicky um, points. I don't think I, I my problem with like the thought about like something being nitpicky. I think if it like directly involves the plot and how it moves or how it you know functions, I, mean, I don't think that's nitpicky. Yeah. I think that's those are. Valid. I would say those are legitimate. Yeah, like for the majority of those, those are legitimate. So I, I think, so I should preface, this was the highest, um, I don't want to say rated, but like recommended by those that read his, or, or helpful. Mm -hmm. It was the most helpful, basically. Um, <laughs> review number two, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> One out of 10. <laughs> I like horror films. No, I, I love, love them. <laughs> yeah. But this, this was not horror in, in the common sense. It was horrible. Oh, this person sounds like a douche. The plot could have been good, but if it weren't for the acting, the music, the special effects, ridiculous, the set, the everything else. Okay, I feel wow. like with some arguments with the special effects, you have to sure. give leniency exactly. because of the time. You can't watch it now and expect the quality that we have now. I thought the acting was actually pretty solid, I too. I liked the acting. And it wasn't like... the. I could be like, oh, this guy or like this person was horrible. There was not one person that I thought was like absolutely terrible. No one really like moment. took me out or anything I didn't, like that. Yeah, I didn't care for the um, construction workers or the boss really or like, you know, the dads that they were Like they're like, acting or like their characters? They're acting. Oh. I guess like, I mean. At that point, but I was thinking that too. But like they're the side. such minor exactly. people that it doesn't, I think all of the core actors and actors, they, they were great. The music, I mean. I didn't really notice. I didn't. Music. I was gonna bring it up to you because I just started being like, "Oh, I should probably." What about the music? But it didn't bother me. It didn't um, stand out. And it any, didn't really affect me one way or the other. I can't say. Um, so maybe that's good. I guess so. Because I was focused on the plot. <laughs> I wanted to like this film. Really, I wanted to. Bullshit. But I had no chance. Ba 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 bullshit. I watched it with my boyfriend, and we both agreed this was a really bad film. I can I cannot even write down everything I hated about this film because I have a word maximum. But how about a sneak piece of how bad this film actually was? I just don't think she could write it. No, in she, general. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm saying everything verbatim. By the way, uh, <laughs> in reality, which is me. <laughs> You're the one who's writing. There is a poltergeist, which is no spoiler since that is in the title. And they drew it like with pencils. It oh looks Oh my god, <laughs> this person. It looks like a Disney film. A bad one. Yes, fine, the film is old, but come on. No, you can't say that. You can't <laughs> right? say that. <laughs> but come on. This is the best they could do? I doubt it. And then they add in spoiler. Then, at one point in the movie, the mother and the daughter return from what I understood as some kind of afterlife, and without any reason, they were covered in pink glibber. Glibber? That's, that's an interesting word to use. This is all glibberish. <laughs> <laughs> it made no sense, and it was disgusting. <laughs> I'm just writing this down because it kind of summarizes the film. Weird and inex inexplicable. Do not watch this movie. I advise do not eat a sandwich instead. That would be more thrilling. You know, I bet her favorite movie is like Mean Girls. Mean Girls? Yeah. Oh, she loves Mean Girls. Yeah. Or um, like Pitch Perfect. Oh my God, ew. Yeah. But she loves horror movies though. But she like loves them. Like, I love. Oh my God. I love yeah. me a good horror movie. Um, the last review I have for us is now this is a horror movie. Um, I forgot the rating, so that's kind of my bad. Let's say 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. There are two types of horror films. They are the scary ones, 
which is what the word horror means in the first place. (laughs) And then there is the bloody gory kind. Perhaps the latter kind should be categorized under another name. At any rate, Poltergeist (laughs) is a good horror film. I think I'd be friends with this person, (laughs) though. (laughs) By the way, their sentences, they... They uh they ended with a period, but there's no space in between each sentence, so I have to like oh, God damn read it. in between. It goes beyond the idea of typical ghosts and sheets jumping out of nowhere and saying boo. But most of the adventure takes place in their world rather than ours. This person's like 60 years. Yeah. Old. <laughs> Although we cannot see what is going on there. This is a very thrilling movie. It has great special effects. And all of the elements, scare elements that make a horror film what it's supposed to be. The clown in the chair at the foot of the boy's bed was particularly tense moment for me. This is the only movie I went to see four times in the theater, partly to watch others' reactions. Oh. <laughs> I've heard that the film and its two sequels were the victim of some type of curse. After each film was released, a member of the cast passed away, including Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann. After the third film, she was only 10. Curse? Coincidence? Who knows? <laughs> I guess anything's possible. All in all, this is one of the best films ever for the horror genre. Horror genre. Hmm. So fairly... That's a very, very good review. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with it. The but... accuracy is a little suspect, but I, it's it's more of just the it's how Spielberg. I felt. And, That's yeah. who wrote it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that one person did kind of uh, bash him on his uh, his uh, overall script writing, yeah. so I could I could see that. Okay, so now we are in the final round, the final rating. Ding, ding, ding. Jessica, what is your final rating? My final rating would probably, not to be cliche with the reviews, but it would probably be like a 6.9. 6.9? Yeah. Nice. I, it's a like nice. 6. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't want to hit 7 because. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, like I said in the beginning, the rewatchability for me is definitely there. Mm-hmm. We've seen this movie twice in the past, what? A couple weeks, I'd say. A couple weeks, yeah. yeah. And it didn't, um, the second, because we've done this before, where we have to kind of rewatch a movie to jog our memory. Mm-hmm. And the second time around, it feels extremely long. This one didn't feel long to me. No. And, you know, it could just be the actual duration of the movie, but I was still interested in everything that was happening. There were moments that I still found funny. There were moments that I still was like, oh, wow, okay, we're here. Um, where it's, it's not so much a jump scare, but it's just, it's, borderline surprising yeah. I yeah. guess. so yeah i definitely would recommend this to people who haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a long time and again it's one of those classics that i think you know that it still holds up pretty well yeah fuck the person who is talking about disney drawings <laughs> this, is, this is great and i'm not putting uh the writer's names or whatever you can find it it's it's not that hard either but get to your own research yeah just whatever so it's funny because uh you saw me i I was actually typing in mine before i asked you i just put in yours but um i wanted to preface that just just to show and so the rating i actually put in before you said yours was 6.8 oh so i i agree i i mean um man it's hard to follow up your your review but i agree i enjoyed the movie i um really liked the acting i thought the um pacing was was pretty good um and like i said i also liked how they kind of jump into it Mm -hmm. at first i i was like oh well okay here we are but i mean that's kind of for me that was part of the ride um and uh i i enjoyed the there's a lot of moments where things are silent which mm-hmm. gave it a little bit more of a kind of a creepy feel i wasn't scared by the movie i'm not saying i'm not saying there's, there's not a lot of movies where i'm scared particularly yeah. it's more tense where i'm like i don't want mm-hmm. don't go i wasn't feeling like that no. for the movie i found it pretty fun it was a, it's more of a fun movie right. than an actual like if you're trying to find a movie that's going to scare you this probably isn't it no i the only maybe the skeleton scene just I think what helps think for me is it? yeah is the thought of the skeletons actually mm-hmm. being real. Then that kind of gives me a little That's creepy the <laughs> kind of feel. But um, and I think what also helps as much as like I think the film is 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 very good. And I think um, people I also recommend that 
those that haven't seen it to see it. Mm -hmm. And you use it as like kind of like almost like a historical mark too, yeah. right? Like if you see anything yeah. that you feel like is familiar or whatever, it could have came from that movie. Like there's, I'm sure there's a lot of movies now that really take from that movie too. I wish movies nowadays kind of take the same kind of pacing approach or, you know, really work on their characters and the character development. Um, because I want to like care about some of these characters too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like if I see a character murdered, and I don't care about the character. I don't Bye. care about the murder. Bye. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> um, so yeah, 6.8. So we got 6.8, 6.9. Yeah, we're pretty close. Yeah. So with that, um, Jessica, why don't you end the podcast? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Put you on the... <laughs> For more, uh, I, I'll, I'll end it though too. For for more information, um, follow our social pages. Um, we're still <laughs> getting everything this set together and stuff, two. but yeah, this is episode two. But I, you know, who never, who knows? People will probably be established by at that point anyway. So, <laughs> um, so with that, thank you, and uh, talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs> And pray, pay attention and listen to me. Give me some time to blow the man down. I'm a deep water sailor just in from Hong Kong to be way. Hey, hey.